Part 24D, How to Survive Plasma Catastrophe on the Flat Earth. How do you survive a worldwide catastrophe with all the different trials to endure? Get mentally strong and toughen up. Stop being a victim, docile, and complacent. The only thing that will get you and yours through is you. Keep calm and survive Hell Week. You have to stay calm because you have to think rationally. You have to adapt and overcome by using your brain. If you use your brain, you will be one of the ones that will survive. Only the strong will survive. To all the preppers out there, sorry to say it, but you have wasted a lot of time and money on things that will not happen. A lot of that gear is gonna be completely useless, but there is a positive side to this and I'm gonna to get to it right now. You don't need a lot of stuff at all to survive this. After the changeover event, there is no night. The way that the sun illuminates afterwards coming from a different direction makes it where there is no nighttime. So flashlights, all that stuff, you won't need after the changeover. Revelation 21, 22 through 25, King James Version. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. One of the most important things in a survival situation is air, oxygen, so you can keep on living. You can only go a couple minutes without it before you die. So make sure that you have a place where you have good ventilation and you can get the air that's going to be needed. You're going to need something to cover your mouth because there's going to be the conflagration fires going on. And there's going to be so much smoke and debris in the air, you're going to want to filter it out the best way possible. Don't think about taking an oxygen tank or anything like that because it's made out of metal and you will get fried and zapped if you take something like that. Location, location, location. All right, I told you guys about the rocks. Uh, you're going to have to also look into uh, connectivity of the rocks. Um, you're not going to want to be like on an iron ore deposit, something like that that's going to attract uh, the electricity. You want something that's uh, insulated uh, and not conductive rock material. And also you're going to have to worry about landslides, rock slides, things like that from the earthquake. So you're going to want something where nothing's going to be able to uh, trap you in or uh, uh, squash you during the, the shaking. Here's just a little picture of what the people in the past did. Uh, those little hand things are the, the, at the end of the tips of the plasma. Uh, that's what they're depicting there. And here's another depiction of plasma. Uh, the, the archer is is a huge uh, motif, archetype in history with one of the plasma formations. So to sum up, caves are good. If you can find one, make sure it's the right rock material. and It's not uh, going to be uh, con conductive to the electricity. Make sure that you have an escape route out of there if there's a landslide. Um, uh, if you can have, you know, two points of exit, that'd be great. And uh, make sure that the it's solid and it's not going to be crumbling down on you. Make sure you get a good, solid, strong climbing rope to keep your butt to the ground when the EM reverses and also from the suction that's going to happen from the vortex in the sky. But we'll get to all that stuff. Uh, this is a Swiss seat. Uh, this is how you can... Uh, Secure yourself. This is what you do in repelling. Uh, if you don't have any of those high-speed harnesses, this is the, uh, what you want to do because you don't want any of the, the metal D-rings or uh, carabiners or anything like that. So uh, learn how to do a Swiss seat. Learn your knots. And then um, that will take uh, – you don't want to be like trying to hang on to the rope or anything like that. You want to secure it to your, your torso uh, like with a Swiss seat type um, rigging. And then one of the most important things for the seven days of Hell Week is water. 
you have to keep hydrated. Now, this is going to be tough, okay? It's going to be tough. If you're in the northern latitudes, you might have some snow that you'll be able to go get to for a while, but it's going to be tough to get water. So you're going to want to bring your own water. However, you don't want a metal canteen. You don't want a plastic canteen and you don't want glass. Glass will break. Plastic could possibly melt and metal could attract the uh, plasma electricity. You're going to want a water skin. Uh, these are made from uh, animal hide um, that you can find them online. Just look for water skins and you'll be able to get them. You don't want any plastic uh, at the spout, at the tip. You just want complete natural uh, water skins. You're going to want as many quarts of water that you can carry and you can take. Uh, the more the better, but you don't want to weigh yourself down with it if you're uh, late to the game. And, and the party's already started. Another great source of hydration is fruits. Bring apples, oranges, anything like that, that is high volume fluids inside the fruit. They're natural containers. They'll hold the moisture in. Uh, it'll give you a little bit of subsidence over the seven days, but you're gonna wanna space this stuff out. The fruit is a great way to get you through the seven days of hell week. It'll hydrate you, it'll give you some nourishment, and it's a and make sure you keep the seeds from it. All right, now we're on to food. Uh, food is going to be tough for a while, but the first thing you need to do in your Diddy Mal kit is bring seeds. And you're going to want to do vegetables that are fast growing, strawberries, tomatoes, things like that. Uh, you're not going to want to plant these seeds until well after Easter, and we'll get to that in part 25. But you're going to want to bring seeds for vegetables, for the short term, and then for the long term, you want to bring fruit seeds so you can grow trees afterwards. And that's going to take a long time to get uh, the fruit from that. So vegetables are your short term option, fruit long term. Remember not to plant your seeds during or right after hell week. You're going to want to wait a while until everything calms down, which is right around Easter time. And I'll get to that in part 25. You can go up to 30 days without food and be fine. Do not bring dehydrated food. Do not bring jerky. Do not eat the jerky. Do not bring crackers, anything that, like that that's processed or dehydrated because you will become dehydrated. It is more important for you to have the hydration and go hungry than vice versa. So after Hell Week, you're going to have a couple months, about three months, where it's going to be really tough to find food because you don't, you're not going to be using your seeds to grow food yet. All right, there's going to be meat sources all over the place. It's just going to be what you're willing to endure and what you can stomach. But you're not going to want to cook any meat that you find. You're going to want to eat it raw. The raw meat has moisture in it, and that's where you can get a lot of your moisture. You're not uh, finding pure Drinking water is going to be really tough, so you're going to have to get moisture somewhere, and the best way of doing that is through meat. Now, make sure you understand what kind of meat you can eat and what you can't. And the Bible tells you. You need to learn why they tell you about unclean and clean animals. Okay, That is really key to understanding what kind of meat you can eat so you don't get parasites and all the other uh, bad things that come along with it. First aid kit, hydrogen peroxide. If there, if you have metal in that kit, you better leave it behind because it's going to get fried and you don't want to get fried because of a first aid kit. Grooming supplies. If it's metal, leave it behind, cache it somewhere, and hopefully that will make it through and then you can get to that cache after the hell week. If your cache of all of your supplies doesn't make it through, your guns, ammo, knives, nails, hammer, whatever you plan on taking, if that doesn't get through, then you better learn how the natives made it through stone, wood, antler, uh, tools, and devices. If you're going to be wearing combat boots or work boots, make sure they're not steel-toed. You will get zapped. Uh, this is one time when rubber shoes will actually come in handy. 
And another benefit of the new sky is there's no winter. There's no seasons. It's all one temperature throughout the entire year. Um, the temperature is a nice balmy 60 to 70. So you, you got nothing to worry about as far as temperature. You will prior to hell week, if you're in the northern latitudes, you'll have the winter temperatures and everything. So you'll need that stuff to get to that point. But once you get to that point of hell week, uh, cold weather gear is not going to be anything that you're going to need. You don't need all this, you know, sleeping bags and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be nice, warm temperature. Okay. And it's, there's no more seasons. Okay. Matches, uh, starting fire. Don't do it. You don't need to cook your food. Just dehydrates it. You're going to not want to uh, worry about that at all. Uh, if you get a compass that gets through, remember it's going to be opposite now. So what used to be north is now going to show south on your compass. So just remember, do opposite. So if you want to learn how to make it, keep everything local. L learn your local animals, your local plants, what you can eat, what you can't eat. That's why you don't want to travel anywhere when, with this. You want to stay in your location that you absolutely understand. Learn your area. Learn your local topography. Uh, plant life, animal life, all that kind of stuff. You're going to want to learn how natives survive, okay? Living off the land. So Aboriginal Australians, uh, Native Americans, uh, uh, African tribes, South American Amazon tribes, learn how they survive. That's how it's going to be for a while before civilization uh, picks back up after a couple decades. And remember, the answer is you. Educate yourself, do your homework, understand the enemy, which is the plasma, and you'll be able to defeat it if you're smart. Use your brain. 